my name's Corinne Woodfine. And my name is Liz Martindale. We are partnership coordinators and we're part of a team of five who are led by Elaine Spink. Corinne and I are based here at Crewe. We're involved as a team in mentor training, school teacher briefings and also in developing school documentation in collaboration with our school colleagues. Today we're going to talk you through the writing of the school-based training report. We have now merged the SBT interim and final report with the grading criteria. This was as a result of feedback from schools. The intention is that there will be a clearer indication of the students' progression and we will retain all the excellent work schools, students and tutors do using the grading criteria. This will also provide the university with detailed evidence for any future placements for the students and for offset inspection of initial teacher training. Do not attempt to print the report as it is a rather lengthy document. The report mirrors the headings and sections on the ROLOs which supports the use of these in compiling the report. The front cover captures a summary of the grades awarded to the student in each aspect and the overall grading at both interim and final. The third page of the report gives clear guidance on how the overall grade at each stage will be determined. The grade for teaching strongly influences the overall grade, but this is in conjunction with the number of a specific grade across the report. So, for example, if the student has four grade ones or more, one of which is in teaching, then the student will be graded as outstanding overall. If teaching was graded as a two, then the student could only be graded as good, despite having four other areas, grades as ones. Ofsted are really clear that the grading judgments are specific to a student's stage of training and development, so a student can be outstanding at any point in their training. And MMU's grading criteria are differentiated for each placement to reflect this. So for example, a BA1 student or a PG1 student can be outstanding at the end of this placement, but the requirements for their subsequent placements will be increased both by the number of standards and the expectations against each of these standards. This can be demonstrated by looking at the good column for PG1, which becomes the requires improvement column for PGF. Here's an example of a report that has been completed for interim. This is highlighted in a specific colour and gives a narrative or example of what the student has done to achieve this grading. More on this in a minute. In allocating a grade for a particular section, it will be a best fit suggested by the highlighting. So, in the example you can see here, the student has some cells that are graded as 1s, some as 2s and some as 3s. But as the majority of the cells in this section are graded as 2s, the overall grading for this section will be a 2. If a student has one cell highlighted as 4, this does not equate to at risk or fail. If there are a significant number of 4s shaded, then this would suggest that the student should be graded as 4 overall in this area. And this will then result in the student being placed at risk at interim or failed at final report. There is a summary of comments box for both interim and final after each of the six areas to provide a narrative of evidence that supports the gradings shown in the grading criteria for that section. These are the comments that will contribute to the student's reference. The comment box is an opportunity to exemplify how the student has demonstrated that they are working at this level. It's also an opportunity to identify targets within each section that would help the student to move to good or outstanding. Have a look at the example. On the final section of the report, a comment is required about the standard of the student's files. It is essential, therefore, that the school tutor or mentor have engaged with these files throughout the course of the placement. 
The report provides space for a summary of the students' strengths at both interim and final, as well as setting overall smart targets for future development. Where a student has been graded as requires improvement in any of the six aspects, they will need support in developing an action plan to move this to good or outstanding. The school is asked to draft the report prior to the visit by the university school-based training tutor. Their role is to support you in making agreed judgments and to quality assure the SBT assessment process. They will carry out a joint lesson observation with you at the interim visit, but not at the final visit. The focus here will be on the student's files, looking at evidence of progression and setting targets for future development. It is good practice to involve the student in discussions that will feed into the report. They should be aware of the level that they are working at through regular joint use of the grading criteria. This is available as a separate document on the website for this purpose. Following the agreement of the report with the university school-based training tutor at interim and at final, an electronic copy must be emailed to this tutor within three days of the visit. They will forward this on to the appropriate placements office along with a copy of their record of lesson observation and record of tutor visit. Receipt of the final report by the placement office will trigger payment to the school. Thank you for your role in the training and development of the next generation of primary teachers.